Our oh, greetings is peace be unto you. Assalamu alaikum. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. With Allah's name, with God's name, the merciful benefactor, the merciful benefactor, the merciful redeemer, the merciful benefactor, the merciful redeemer. <coughs> we witness that He's one cares about all of his creation is special it's, they're not hearing us out there too well I don't know if this is on or not it is on it's on now it's a little, little uh, hair down yeah it might be all right now. Can you hear me all okay back there? No, sir. no, they're still not hearing. I don't know why. Can we adjust the speakers? You're going to try to do something about it. We hope to be doing this kind of regularly, in fact, regularly. Um, we're going to need chairs. We're going to need chairs. There have to be chairs. Have to get chairs in here. So we'll get chairs. We don't have them today, but inshallah, next, next time we come here for this occasion, which I hope will be at least every other week, every other Sunday, um, we'll have chairs, inshallah. Wait one minute, we try to adjust it. We're working with it. How is it now? It's okay? All right. I knew, I knew if we just be patient, the, the one responsible for it here, he's, he's the sound man. He'll get it right. Is it right? So let me, uh, let me say again, it's with God's name, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, the merciful benefactor, the merciful redeemer that we began. We witness that he's one and cares about all of his creation, especially the model human creation that we see in the prophets beginning with Abraham, Moses, Muhammad, Jesus, Muhammad, and all of them, peace be upon them. In fact, the model life was given with the first human being, and that is the human being that's called Adam. <clears throat> and we witnessed that Muhammad, the last prophet, who brought the last of the, rev the revealed books, the Quran, is the model, the last of those models for all of us who believe in God and being accountable to God to follow. Follow his sunnah, follow his tradition, follow his model life. <clears throat> I'm going to have to borrow some glasses. I went away, rushed out. This is a relief. Thank you very much. This is a relief here. I don't have author, I don't have a, a air condition. I don't have air condition at home, but I do have arthritis. <laughs> but this feels good here. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, see, can we? Had those glasses in my hand. I think I left them in the vehicle. H hold a minute. Uh, let me see how these gonna work. They might work. Are those yours? If those are yours, I think yours work for me. These work. I, ca I can make it with these. This is good. <clears throat> I have to be able to follow my notes. I don't know if uh, Sister Bina is here who works for a company, CPC, CPC Contrast. Maybe someone is here who can, uh, that'll be, who will be seeing Bina soon, can give her that letter. I just passed it to a security brother. We should be able to find someone that uh, who will see Bina soon, inshallah. Sister Kay, uh, I don't know who's here or who will be here. Safa, from the office, Any, anyone from the office. <coughs> Let me, uh, before going in, into the subject for this afternoon, let me uh, make you aware of what we're trying to do. We have this facility here, and it costs, it costs to stay here. The lease is not too high, but it's more than what we are getting. I expect there'll be more attending this, this, this Sunday meeting. Um, when the word gets around more, and when, when more, when more attends, then we, we, the uh, contribution, the contribution will be more, and I think we will be able to manage the cost here, the monthly cost. Should be able to manage this monthly cost without anyone straining, just with the normal contributions that we receive from such gatherings as this, we should be able to make it without pressuring anyone to give more. Um, now, what, what we will be doing, what we will be doing. I used to have a residency, I don't have, I haven't had a residency in many years. I used to have a residency on Stony Island where the Nation of Islam meets. Um, Minister Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam. Um, <clears throat> and uh, I used to speak there. They, they were expecting me every Sunday unless I was uh, out of town or sick or something. And uh, we can do the same here. If not at this facility, at some facility we can do the same. Um, we can have a place where I can uh, uh, have a Sunday address on a weekly basis. Yeah, inshallah. We, we can have that. And I'm uh, more than willing to do that if we, have a, if we have a suitable facility. So Brother Majid and those supporting him um, are keeping this facility open to us. And we hope that we will support it and support the programs or activities other than my engagement that they will have here uh, at this facility. Uh, that is the way we'll, we'll be successful and uh, accommodating me and other activities or programs that we need. Uh, so I'm uh, really asking you to do that. Asking you to become acquainted with the programs or activities that are scheduled for this facility and please support them. Uh, so we can uh, keep this facility.
the subject the subject uh, the subject is guidance 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 revelation and education not not uh, just revelation revelation and education before I finish you'll understand if you don't understand now in the holy book the last revealed book the Quran the book itself is called Hudan guidance Hudan guidance lil muttaqin guidance for the upright or for the righteous or the straight people you know the language our young boys use on the street I don't know if they're using it now but a few years ago it was popular they say straight up well that's this word muttaqin means actually literally means straight up but in uh, religious uh, revelation or in revelation or in uh, religious language muttaqin means obedient to God and respecting the things that God has established for human beings to respect being respectful being regardful God says this word is translated regardful it's translated regardful also um, the regardful and God says Allah, be regardful give your regards be regardful of God who created every you and everything and made everything possible that is good be regardful of him but God says be regardful of God and also the close family ties the close family ties now the same word is used for hellfire and be regardful of the fire the fire of wild passions that can take to burn eat the good life up dissipate the good life destroy it <clears throat> so guidance is what we're given and we're given guidance in religion we are given guidance from the creator the creator of the skies and the earth said in the language of the uh, scripture translation the heavens and the earth right. but the heavens only mean elevated place yes. elevated strat as uh, uh, elevated levels or stratus stratus stratosphere elevated heights levels and heights that's what ca skies mean so we are told to uh, <clears throat> Revere God, be reverence, be regardful of God, and also the family ties. <clears throat> this this uh, is nothing new to say to, to say to people. It is said to us in the Quran, but that's not new. All the people before were told to be respectful of God, to reverence God, right. and to respect their parents, their mother and the father to be respectful to be regardful of your parents uh, the word al -ham doesn't only mean parents it means all family close family ties al -ham. it means those who are born of the same uh, mother or as some translations say of the womb and I think of the womb was translated uh, given like that although this uh, this does have a direct reference uh, to the females who birth that who birth children and it doesn't say what kind of female just say females so uh, what I'm saying is it doesn't say humans it's just accepted that we're talking about humans it's accepted that is accepted that the reference is to human beings but the reference also is, is to all uh, sacred ties of relationship for example uh, we can't we can't exclude respect for how God created animals to mate and reproduce 
we can't exclude even energy. Right. How energy, negative and uh, positive charges are established by the creator to produce uh, energy, uh, electricity or whatever, magnetism or whatever, <clears throat> or just to hold matter together, to keep the comp composition of matter. God has created negative and positive. He has created male and female. I used to be a welder. I'm still a welder. Once a welder, always a welder, I guess. And um, uh, some of the jobs we had, we call some of the things tools and some of the powers we use, we call them female, male, male and female. And this language is throughout material world and science. Male and female, mating, mating, mates. So um, the, the um, translation that says the uh, family ties is, is right. Uh, and the translation that says, uh, uh, refer to the wombs of the female is, is, is correct also, is correct also. Uh, but understand this, that Quranic language, <clears throat> the language of our holy book, it has reference more importantly to scriptures that came before. And that's established very clearly throughout the Quran, that the book has reference to scriptures that came before, to the prophets of the past, right. to the prophets, messengers before Muhammad the prophet, peace be upon them. Uh, so this is what we must understand. Um, and we know there was a certain uh, uh, male figure in scripture, in the Bible, uh, who had an offering for, for God. His name is Cain, Cain. Cain had an offering from the ground. He produced from the ground. A farmer, agriculturalist, you might say. And his, uh, his brother was uh, it's called Abel. And uh, he was a shepherd. Uh, his charity, or his gift to God, came from his labor as a shepherd. So his was fruit of the womb, so the Bible says. Fruit of the womb. So here is Abel, the man who gives an offering called fruit of the womb. And here's his brother who gives an offering uh, that is offering, uh, offering, an offering of the ground, of the ground, the land, the land. Uh, and uh, this, uh, these two brothers are supposed to be the descendants, direct descendants of Adam. They, uh, they are Adam reproduced. Adam reproduced. And uh, Cain is said in the Genesis of the Bible, it's just said, he's said to be more like Adam. And that he was uh, working the ground, working the ground. And I think it has a reference to Adam, the saying in the scripture that Adam was made from the ground. Right. He was formed of the earth, or of the ground. <clears throat> uh, and if I recall it correctly, when Cain was conceived in his mother, his mother said, now I have gotten me a, me a child from the Lord. From the Lord, she said, a child from the Lord. <laughs> well, who's the Lord? God? She got a child from God? Or was she calling Adam the Lord, her husband? Adam, her mate. Adam the Lord. Was she calling Adam the Lord? Or was she calling, re referring to God, the creator of everything? as the Lord, and I got, now I got me a child from the Lord. If she was saying, if she was referring to God, I had God in mind, then she's calling her son, the son of God. That's correct. If she's referring to Adam, she's calling her son correctly, the son of Adam. That's right. The son of Adam.
guidance. We didn't make this earth. The earth supports us, supports our life. Our life has to feed on the earth, has to breathe the earth air, our atmosphere, drink the earth water, and eat the earth solid foods. We cannot exist without feeding on the earth. That's correct. And this is in scripture. I'm not saying anything. I don't say anything that's not in scripture. This is in scripture. <clears throat> it may not be in the exact words that I give it, but the, the truth that I give is not mine. I don't have the ability to give it, except as I receive it. It's in scripture. It's from the scriptures. Yes. So we feed upon the earth and we live upon the earth That's right. and the earth shelters us yes. and the earth clothes us. That's correct. Yes. The things of the earth we wear. I'm wearing CPC come to us right now. Yes, sir. Cool linen yes. for this 95 temperature. And where did the product come from? The earth. So God says in the second chapter of the Quran that this book is guidance. Who then? Guidance. Lil Mutaqeen. It is guidance for those who want to be straight up. In the language of the boys on the street. It is guidance for the upright. That's the translation. Not my translation, someone else's translation. Guidance for the upright. And another translation, guidance for the God-fearing. God-conscious. That's what it means by God-fearing. I mean, they keep God on their mind because they're afraid not to keep him on their minds. Right. They're afraid they can't live without him. That they will slip and their life will go astray if they do not keep him on their conscience. So they are called the muttaqeen. Upright the upright. Guidance for the upright. Then we have also the Sabilillah. Mm -hmm. What we just referred to there is the Surat al-Mustaqim. The path that goes vertically, straight. Mustaqim, like we stand straight, straight up. Surat al-Mustaqim. Al the path of the upright, the path of the upright person, Surat al Mustaqim. So we think of this as vertical, going up vertical, straight up, straight up to excellence, purity, and excellence in God. Because if we pursue what God has created us for us to pursue in terms of what we need for the betterment of our life, we eventually arrive where God created us to be. So we, we, we eventually meet God. The prophet, prayers and peace be upon him, Muhammad, the last prophet who received the last revelation of the Quran, he said, whoever sets out to travel the path of knowledge, true knowledge, is upon the pa a path that will take him to his God. Then right. Abraham set out on a path to seek answers, to get knowledge. Yes, sir. He wanted to know what is, wh what is in this creation that I should respect and bring my life in accord with it. He wanted to know what could he trust his life to. And he observed the sun rising after he had studied the heavens all night. He observed the sun rising and when the sun started to rise, he said, this must be the God. It is brighter than all the others. 
and so splendid, so, so beautiful and bright. And uncovering things that hit, will hit in the dark on earth. Taking the darkness from the things that were hid and showing man his life field, his work field. It was so impressive, the sun, when he was thinking rationally as a free thinker, thinking on what is in the creation, in all of this that I can observe with my senses, my eyes and my senses. What is it out there that I should give my life to? He had already rejected the stars because he saw one fall during the night. Right. And when the star fell, he said, oh, the stars cannot be my God because my God does not fall. That's right. That's right. All right. So now he's looking at the sunrise. Uh, he, now he is a scientific thinker. A scientific thinker observing something does not just see it and make a quick decision. Scientific way of thinking is to watch it until it concludes itself. That's right. That's right. Stay with it. Don't be quick to say, this is it. This is what I'm look looking for. So he wasn't quick to say, this is what I'm looking for. Though he was very much impressed. He watched it until the sun set. And when the sun set, it appeared as though the sun went to bed. And he said, no, this cannot be my God. My God is not one to rest or to sleep or to die. Now, we know the sun is not really dead. It's going to rise again in the morning from the other direction. That's correct. Rises in one direction, sets in the other. Right. We know it's going to rise again. But I guess that's why he didn't say de death. He said, my God is not one to rest. That's or go to sleep. Take a break. That's Abraham, the free thinker. Now coming back to the earth as what God has created for us to get benefits from. All our benefits we need to live in community with one another live in towns, whatever, yes. cities, countries, and get governments, under government. All we need is, uh, is on the earth. And what is on the earth for man to utilize is what eventually brings man to requisition government. Yes. To say we got to have a government. That's right. Laws and everything are required in time because of our interaction with the, with, the, with the goods of the earth in each other. Yes. Business, yes. etc. Industry, industry, yes, etc. You got money, now you need to have a system yes. to protect your money. So you have a business system, you have an economic system. Some things are too much for the private sector. You give it, you give the responsibility to government. But where it all starts? Now we're talking on cause and effects. Cause and effects. There are causes that produce effects. Called in scripture, also by the names Elula Wal Akhira. First things and, and final things. Elula Wal Akhira. First things and final things. Working with first things creates effects. First things are causes. But those causes create effects. And effects become causes for more effects. And the process continues and continues 
until there's a final conclusion. And whether you know it or not or believe me or not, we are now living in the conclusion of prophecy. Yes, sir. That's it. it ain't to come, it's already, it already came. It's here. We're living now in the conclusion of prophecy. It didn't happen back then, it happened, it's happening now. It was pointed to back then. The seers, the prophets or messengers of God, they pointed to this time. And in the Quran it's called Yom Din. Literally it means the day of religion. Yes, sir. The day means the time in the conclusion of things. Yes. For religion to be seen and man to, be, to answer for the way he has presented himself in religion. Yes. That's the time right now. Well, right. so this great earth we have here, and it is a great earth, we call it Mother Earth. Yes, sir. God taught us to give it even more respect than the secular world tells us to give it. When God says in the last revelation, in the last book, the Quran, He says, El Ardu Masjidullah. That's right. Yes, sir. The earth is the God's place of worship. Yes. The earth is God's mosque. Yes. The, the earth is God's masjid. Yes. To the Christians, the earth is God's church. Yes. To the Jews, the earth is God's synagogue. To the others, the earth is God's temple. That's right. Huh? Yes, sir. All right. All right. Do you know Mother Nature put it in people, tribes, Indian tribes, and others to respect this earth? They won't pollute it. They I don't say they're, they're doing the right thing, but this, uh, it's obvious that man hasn't always done the right thing either. That's right. I'm talking about the man. That's right. That's you know, right. like in the movie, The Man. Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm talking about the man. Yes, sir. So it's not, it's not obvious to us that the man has done the right thing all the time. That's right. Yeah. So these Native Americans we call Indians, they believe that their, their continued existence on earth depends on them not hurting the balance of nature, respecting the balance of nature. And if we understand it, that's what God asks of all of us who claim religion, the Christian Jews and Muslims. In the Quran, la tabdila, la tabdila fi khalq Allah, let there be no altering on the original creation that God made. That's right. Don't change the laws that he put it under. That's right. Don't tamper with the laws that he put it on or that he put it under. Don't tamper the design. Don't tamper with the design that he made. Yeah. Yes. La fi law. Let there be no altering or alterations on the nature, the original nature established by God. Yes. Uh, we are living in a time when we need the guidance to be correct. Yes. Yes, sir. Our Quran, our book is guidance. Right. For Muslims. The Quran. Guidance for Muslims. And for all mankind if they will accept it. That's for all mankind. Huran Linnas. Guidance for mankind. That's what it says, plainly. Huran Linnas. And clear evidence establishing the criteria and what is not criteria. The guidance and the criteria. Praise be to Allah. So this is clear. Now, 
How did everything get so far off? Yes, good question. We have guidance, the Quran, and the people who came, uh, who, 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 who uh, answered the prophets or messengers before Muhammad. They had guidance from God, from the Creator. And in the Quran, the, the sincere, devoted, obedient servant of God is used to say something very important for us to recognize. So this person is praying to God. And it seems that he must be praying, leading a group of people in prayer. Because he says we. And he referred to the paths that had made their life great and successful. Yes, sir. Plural, not one path, plural. Subalana, he says. Subalana. Say, you have guided us. Say, if you had not got, if you, meaning God, had not guided us to our paths, not one path, to our paths, we certainly would not have found guidance. Right, right. Sincere. Worshipper of God. Yes. Honest and truthful worshiper of God. What am I referring to now? Yes, the fact that we cannot come by any knowledge yes. unless our minds engage what God created. Right. There is no knowledge except that our minds engage what God created. That's the beginning of knowledge. Correct knowledge. That's right. Yes. So he said, we could not, not have had these paths if you had not guided us. La ula hadan Allah except that God guided us to this. What paths are you referring to? The paths of science. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Astronomy. Yes. Biology. Yes, sir. Chemistry. Yes, sir. Physics. Etc. Including political science. Man could not have had it unless he engaged the creation of God and studied how God had evolved societies and communities and how they had interacted yes. with his created world and became more knowledgeable and eventually became scientific. Praise be to Allah. Uh, so all, all designed to be good for man. The creation story says, in the first day before man was, such and such was in the creation. And it was good. And on the second day, yeah. such and such was and it was good. That's right. And the third day the same. And the fourth day the same. And the fifth day the same. That's right. And then man was made. Yes. And it was good. That's what I work for. Yeah. The sixth day was good too. God couldn't conclude it unless it was good. Then he said on the seventh day, according to the Bible, he rested. No, he didn't rest. Come on. He finished mankind. <laughs> and prepared mankind to earn heaven. That's the rest. When mankind, is, his creation, his social nature has been completed by God. He has been completed for, for uh, living as a social being with his fellow man in an order that would be good for them. He, he was ready for that. And now he was ready also to earn heaven. Right, there it is. So God rested, mean he, 
he, he, he rested from his works of putting man in a good situation to go to heaven. Yes. Yes, sir. Now, you know, in music, I think seven is a rest stop, isn't it? Yes, sir. I ain't a musician. But I'm a student of nature and science. Yeah, I think seven is a rest stop. But you don't stop the music. You just pause. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Praise be to Allah. <laughs> now let me go to a to a scene that shines light on what will be a problem for this wonderful creation. You know, I like to hear old Satchimo sing about it. What a wonderful world. Yes, sir. Satchimo Armstrong. What is his real name? Louis. Louis, Louis, Louis. Louis. yeah, Louis Armstrong. Yeah. So anyway, uh, continuing. God, in uh, a story uh, that the Arabs have about prophets' uh, life, I mean, uh, life, uh, pardon me, life of revelation, having things revealed to him by God, he said that, he told his followers, he said, God wanted to show Abraham his creation. So he said, Abraham, look, observe my creation. And this is the, he had not made it yet. God is showing him a picture of what he's going to make. Yes. The, world is, the world for man has not cre been created yet. So he said, Abraham, observe my creation. And Abraham observed it. And Abraham said, my Lord, speaking to God, my Lord, how can anyone go wrong in such a wonderful creation? Right. And then God caused it within an instance right. to appear with the allurements, the attractions that Satan, yeah. or the Christian in the church of Satan, Satan, that Satan had put on it to introduce it to man. That's right. So after God had made the world as he wanted it to be introduced to man, then Satan decided that he was going to alter it. Yes. You didn't forget what we said about altering, huh? That's right. Come on. He, he decided he's going to alter it and make it so fascinating. Make it so enchanting. So charming that mankind won't be able to resist his attractions. Right. The attractions that Satan will, would, 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 would be decked the creation with. Just decorated all with these attractions. One trans translation said he made wrong, sin, yeah. fair seeming. Yeah. Yes made it appear beautiful and innocent. So when Abraham, I mean, pardon me, when uh, Jibril, this is Jibril, not Abraham, I'm sorry. Correct your paper. He is showing Jibril, the angel Gabriel, yes, the creation, not, not Abraham. So when uh, Jibril saw the creation, that was altered by the shaitan, right. or Satan, he said, my Lord, how can anyone go straight in such a world? That's right. Again, my students and guests here, God says in the last revealed book, he says, Never did God bring something to his messenger 
that Satan didn't strive to produce the likes of it and introduce it to the people. Well, I've set the stage for what I'm going to give you now. What is governing the life of most of the people right now? Yes, sir. What is attracting them right now? What is ordering their life, how they will live until they die right now? has a design that's more ancient than the ancient kingdoms that you know of. Mm, yes, sir. Yes. Satan has been around a long, long time. Yes, that's right. <laughs> and his design is still on, the, on, on, on our life. He, have, he has kept his design on the life of the people of the world. Right. Remember what just, I just said to you that God said, never did God desire something for, for his servant. That Satan or the Shaitan didn't strive to come up with the likes of it. Yeah. Something resembling it. See, he didn't produce a strange world. Satan just made the world that God already had produced That's right. more fascinating, mm. more tempting yes. to take you out of the obedience that is in you by nature, by birth, for God. That's right. I don't know why I'm going so slow. I think it's because I feel better. It ain't hot in here. It's hot at home. Especially I had to cook those collard greens. I got out of the yard. Brother, Brother Hearns, Arthur Hearns. I'm sorry, I don't know his uh, Muslim name right now. I've been knowing him for a long, long time. Brother Arthur, he used to cut hair. He was cutting hair, bef he was cutting hair before he was a Muslim. He became a Muslim, Brother Arthur Hearns. Well, he planted a nice garden back behind CPC on the CPC Comtrust grounds uh, across the street from the facility, way back there in the back of the houses, the two houses um, that are there. And uh, one brother is living in, uh, Brother John Muhammad is living in one of the houses. Um, and I went back there because they told me those collard greens were ready. And I was just too busy to get back there, so Almost two weeks has, has passed past, and I hadn't gone back there. So I just decided last night I was going to go back there, even if the mosquitoes tried to keep me out, I was going to get some of those greens. And I did. And I put them in the pot. See, I love to cook. Cooking is one of my hobbies. I, uh, uh, the cooking for me is uh, uh, the harp for David, you know. Uh, David, he played a harp, and, and that's how, that's how that's how he took the burden off of him, you know. <laughs> relaxation, a little time for relaxation. So I cook, and it takes the burden off me. I love to cook. I cook those greens, and I told, I told my wife, I said, look, I cook those greens for tomorrow. It's too hot today uh, to uh, finish the cooking and eat uh, for here. I say, uh, so we, I'll just put the greens up for tomorrow. I hate to admit this, <laughs> but I would have been here a little earlier. <laughs> I went to that pot. I went to that pot like I was under hypnosis, <laughs> and put it on the table. And I ate those those collard greens. Oh, and man, they're delicious! Wow, they were delicious. Straight out of the garden, no pesticides. Thank you, brother Arthur Hearns. Thank you very much. Now, we get back to the subject here. Um, yes. So we're living in a time, you know, when the design is still here that, that Satan had on the ancient people of the world. And he has kept it. So his design grows 
with the history of mankind. As mankind develops more, and the, uh, the design also develops more. Yeah. Yes, but it's the same old design. Right. Now, you know, the Bible says you ain't supposed to, like most of us in church and religious life, I'm sorry, I have to correct that. Most of us in religious life, oh, we take, we take the Satan to be super, super. Yeah, come on. He's supernatural. Yeah. Super, super natural. He's unnatural, but certainly not supernatural. That's right. That's right. The Bible doesn't say fear him as something that you can't deal with because you're natural and he's supernatural. Right. The Bible says rebuke. I give you the exact words. Quote, rebuke Satan and he will run from you. End quote. Right. Didn't say run, it said flee. That he will flee from you. Means run. Means run swiftly. The Quran says there will come a time when you have to answer for how you lived your life. Mm -hmm. And there will be those who will point to Satan. Right. Hey God, yeah. he tempted me to do these things. Yeah. And God will say he had no power over you right. but the power to invite you. Not to force you. That's right. He only had the power to invite you. So who is the blame on if you accepted his invitation? Right. It's on you. That's, right. That's what God is saying. That there's going to come a time when people will want to point to the Satan, the devil, and say the devil made me do this. But God is not going to accept that as an excuse. Because God says that the devil or Satan has no power over you but the power to suggest something yeah. or to invite you to do something and it is you who accept yeah. the suggestion or the invitation. That's right. That's right. All right. But that is not all. God says, surely such as drinking or taking intoxicants and gambling and gangs of superstition yes. are of the works of the devil. Yes. Stay away from it yes. if you expect to be successful. That's right. So God has revealed to us some of the schemes of Satan. That's right. One of his schemes is intoxicants, That's right. yes, liquors and drugs, etc. Another one of his schemes is to, is to uh, 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 encourage gambling That's right. and how many men have lost their wives, their family and have gotten killed gambling huh? yes, sir. yes. but this world doesn't, doesn't keep that before you does it oh no they're not trying to counter punch those who are inviting you to these things 